What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today I have a brand new device called the new G3 and this phone will be available for around $200. Now the cool thing about this phone is the fact that it will work in the US because a lot of cheaper devices from China don't work in the US but this one is compatible with some US carriers. The phone itself is fairly small and it's also very easy to use holding it in one hand and the design kind of reminds me of the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, well a smaller Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. So we have a metallic frame and glass on the front and on the back and I have to give it to them, the phone looks absolutely gorgeous. For specifications we have the MediaTek Helio P25 CPU, this is an octa-core CPU clocked at 2.3 GHz, we also have 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of internal storage. As always out of that 64 GB of internal storage we only have about 54 GB left but the phone can also take an SD card and that SD card can be used as internal storage and that means that you're gonna be able to install apps on the SD card. Aside from that, the phone is running Android 7.1 and this is also very close to stock Android and that means that there is nothing holding the phone back. Therefore the scores that we are gonna get on the Antutu benchmark and the Geekbench 4 are also pretty high. And just before we go any further, can you help me out by pressing that like button, it's gonna make a huge difference for this video and maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's start with the front of the device. So on the front we have a 5.7 inch IPS panel that has an 18 by 9 screen ratio and we have a 1440 by 720 p resolution. So technically a 720 p resolution and I know some of you are gonna be disappointed by that but the screen looks quite good as it is. The bezels around the screen are fairly small and the glass covering the screen is also curved around the edges and that gives the phone a more premium look and feel and that's why the phone looks a lot like a Samsung Galaxy S9 or S8. The colors on the screen look great and they are very vibrant and the viewing angles are also very good so you can see the screen no matter how you look at it. On top of that the screen gets bright enough so you can use it outside in direct sunlight and that's not something that we see every day. The screen sensitivity is also good and the screen can register up to 5 touches at the same time and I haven't really had any problems whenever I was typing or playing games or anything that I was doing on the screen. So even though the screen has a 720p resolution I don't think that's a big issue because the screen is small enough um, that you don't actually notice those pixels. Now the navigation buttons are also sitting on the screen and I don't usually have a problem with the navigation button sitting on the screen but with this phone you cannot move them around so if you want the back button on the other side well there is no way of doing it. Now this is an easy fix and this could be fixed with a software update but as of now the buttons are kind of stuck as they are. Alright so just above the screen we have a 13 megapixel camera, we also have a couple of sensors, the speaker, an LED notification light that can change colors and a front facing uh, flash. So the picture quality from that front facing camera is great as long as you have plenty of light. So with plenty of light the pictures um, are very detailed and very sharp so no complaints but as soon as you don't have enough light the pictures become a bit blurry and grainy but that's kind of normal for um, phones under $200. As I mentioned earlier, the phone's frame is made out of metal and it's also painted blue so it can match the front and the back of the phone. Now the phone is not very thick at all and it only weighs about 175 grams, so not heavy at all. So on the right hand side you're gonna find the power button, we also have the volume keys and the buttons are made out of metal and on top you're gonna find the slot for the SIM card. So this device can take either two SIM cards or a SIM card and an SD card. There is nothing on the left hand side of the phone and at the bottom you're gonna find the microphone, we have a USB-C C port and a speaker. That USB-C port supports OTG and that means that uh, you can plug in any USB stick and the phone can read whatever you have uh, on that USB stick and it also supports fast charging but it's not that quick so charging the device from 0 to 100 is then about 2 hours and 10 minutes. As for that speaker well it gets fairly loud but it kind of lacks bass and after all it's just one tiny little speaker but here is a quick sample of how the speaker sounds. Alright and since we are talking about charging earlier, inside this phone we have a 3000 mAh battery. So you're gonna be able to make it up through an entire day on one charge and out of that get between 6 and 7 hours of screen on time. And even though 6 to 7 hours of screen on time is not that much, it's basically on par with pretty much any flagship device out there. 
And we're moving on to the back of the device. So the back of the device is made out of glass, just like the front, and it's also very shiny. Now, it looks great as long as you keep it clean, but keeping this phone clean is close to impossible. So every single time you touch the back, you're gonna leave a fingerprint and you're gonna have to clean because otherwise the phone just doesn't look that great. So on the back there, we have a 13 megapixel camera, we have a five megapixel camera, a flash and a fingerprint scanner. That fingerprint scanner, it's accurate 10 out of 10 times and it's also a bit quicker than most phones in this price range. I mean, I'm not gonna compare this with a flagship because the fingerprint scanner is slower but still faster than a lot of devices um, around $200. Luckily, the second camera on the back of this phone is not fake as we've seen for a lot of um, cheaper devices from China. So the second camera on the back actually works and you can take some cool um, looking pictures with that bokeh effect or the portrait mode, depending how you want to call it. Now, the phone also supports um, 4K video recording, but unfortunately we don't have any type of image stabilization. So we don't have optical image stabilization or electronic image stabilization. And next I want to show you a quick um, sample of a video recording that I've done with this device in 4K. All right, we have a quick 4K video recording uh, done with the new G3 smartphone. So from the looks of it, this phone doesn't have any type of um, image stabilization, so no optical image stabilization or electronic image stabilization. It's also a bit windy, so you may hear um, some wind aside from my voice. But this is how a 4K sample from this device um, looks like. And it looks like this car is still here, the ugly one from uh, two videos ago. And as you've seen for yourself, the video quality is okay, but um, far from spectacular. But I mean, the phone is only $200, so what can we expect um, for that much money? The camera app is fairly quick and it looks very similar to the camera app that I've seen on an iPhone. So I'm uh, imagining that they kind of copied that camera app. But at least we have a pro mode included in there as well. The pictures that I took with the portrait mode look very DSLR-like and uh, these are probably the best pictures that I've seen from any phone under $500. And I'm very happy to see that the edge detection is that good because if you look close enough, you can barely see the edges um, around the subjects. So very, very impressed um, with the pictures that I took um, with the portrait mode with this device. And moving on to regular pictures, so pictures that you're gonna take with a 13 megapixel camera on the back of the device, those ones look good as well. The colors are very accurate and the pictures are very very sharp, but I wish the dynamic range would be better because in certain situations the dynamic range isn't the best. But overall for a phone that costs about $200, I think it can take some really good looking pictures if you have plenty of light. Moving on to low light performance. So of course the pictures that you're gonna take in low light aren't gonna be anywhere as good as the pictures that you took with plenty of light, but they're still acceptable. Now if you zoom in, you can definitely see that the edges around the subjects are very soft and there is a lot of blur going on. And Taking pictures in low light also takes quite some time because the phone has um, trouble focusing. So sometimes you're gonna have to take the same picture uh, two or three times because um, the picture turns out blurry. So the low light performance is okay, but uh, not um, exceptional. And we are moving on to performance. So we have the MediaTek Helio P25, which is not a slow CPU by any means, and we have stock Android. And that means that there is nothing holding the phone back. And you're definitely gonna feel that mostly when you're scrolling in between screens and when you're opening apps. So opening apps is done quickly, but of course there is no comparison between this and a flagship device. A flagship device will definitely be faster at opening apps. Multitasking works decent as well, so the phone can keep a whole bunch of apps running in the background, but whenever you're gonna use the split screen function from Android 7, you will notice some lag. I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely noticeable. Most apps that I tried on this phone also work good. So take Chrome, for example. If you give it a couple of seconds for the page to load, scrolling up and down, zooming in and zooming out um, works good without much lag. But depending how many other apps you have running in the background, you may notice some lag every now and then. On the YouTube app, the maximum resolution is 720p and that's the maximum resolution of the screen. But all the videos at that resolution work without any lag. And you can also zoom in so you can take full advantage of that 18 by 9 screen ratio. I've also tried some games on this phone and that included Traffic Rider, Need for Speed, No Limits and Modern Combat 5. And for the games that I played, I didn't experience any lag whatsoever. However, the phone did get a bit warm towards the fingerprint scanner, so in the back there. But other than that, I haven't experienced any lag. Now, I'm imagining that there will be some games in the Google Play Store that may experience some lag, but not all of them. So for gaming, it's gonna be a decent enough device. 
And we're moving on to the GPS unit inside this phone. So it only takes the phone a couple of seconds to find your location. And it doesn't matter if you're inside or outside, it finds your location very quick. And of course, using Google Maps also works very well. And I haven't had any issues with it. For sensors, we have all the sensors available that you would find in a flagship, including a gyroscope. And that means that you can use the phone as a VR headset. And all the other sensors that are available seem to work good as well. And we are moving on to connectivity. So the phone supports 4G connectivity, we have dual band Wi-Fi and we even have NFC. And the NFC works good for making payments or to use NFC tags or transfer files in between devices. And as I mentioned before, this phone also works in the US. So the bands that are available for this device will match some US carriers. And of course, the phone will be available in Europe in a couple of weeks and it will match those carriers as well. The call quality is also good, so no complaints, but I wish the speaker on top here would get a bit louder, because if you're in a very noisy place, it's kind of difficult to hear the other person. As for the speeds over the 4G network and the dual band Wi-Fi, they're good and appropriate for a phone in this price range. And it's time to conclude this video. So for $200, this phone offers a lot of value, not to mention that the phone looks quite good and it has an NFC chip. And realistically, I haven't really seen any phones under $200 that have an NFC chip. So if you're looking for a good um, phone on a budget, this could be a very good choice. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.